Mojej demo. Warlord Ismail Khan is the great father, but that's not his official title, nor is it the title he prefers. Officially, he's the governor of Herat province, but he prefers to be called the emir of southwest Afghanistan. He's the most well-known of Afghanistan's regional warlords. Moye Demo. one of the most powerful. Power that is demonstrated each Thursday when he opens his doors to try to solve the problems of Herat citizens. They line up, men on one side, women on the other, and wait all day for the chance to speak to their emir. The requests range from municipality issues to family advice. This man is concerned that a newly built sewer could flood his neighborhood when the winter rains come. He also hears issues of life and death. This little girl's father killed his wife. The girl's grandmother has come to ask Ismail Khan to speed up the investigation and trial of her son-in-law. Khan plays the role of judge and jury, making a decision and ordering his subordinates at his side to carry out the verdict. Sometimes he just offers his opinion. Heeding the woman's demands, he orders the police to speed up the process. A model democratic process it isn't, but Ismail Khan is known as one of the few leaders in Afghanistan who can get the job done. When this group of merchants complains that their shops have been destroyed after a dispute with their landlord, he solves the problem faster than any judicial process. It's powers such as these and his career as a Mujahideen commander fighting the Soviet invasion and the Taliban that earned him the title of warlord. It's a distinction to lose in his new role as governor. So many people call you a warlord. Many people here call you an... I don't have a warlord. Uh, ask, uh, I think uh, don't uh, speaking about war. Don't. <laughs> he prefers to speak about the progress he's made rebuilding Herat in the last two years. That, uh, well, I've got no unemployment here. Everybody is working. The government with the people side by side is working for the improvement of the city, and we are working for the improvement of the schools. We are uh, paving the roads. We are. Uh, working on many different spheres for the betterment of the conditions here. The conditions in Herat are impressive. The city is safe and reconstruction here is more widespread than in the capital. As drivers swerve to miss potholes on Kabul's narrow streets, Ismail Khan has repaved and widened Herat's thoroughfares. He even built a new park and planted gardens all over the city. These improvements aren't without cost, however. They were demo. by lucrative taxes collected from trade across the Iranian border. Instead of passing all the revenue to the central government, Khan simply kept much of it for himself. His troubles with the central government don't stop there. He still keeps a private army, even as Kabul is in the process of creating a national army. Khan is also accused of using his soldiers to safeguard his power in Herat and to silence his critics. It happens that there is a clash. Rafiq Shahir was beaten and jailed by Khan's men for speaking against the emir. Ismail Khan's policies and his politics during jihad were needed for uh, this part of Afghanistan, but now they are not needed because now it is time for us to rehabilitate, to reconstruct and step forward to democracy.
Ismail Khan makes his way past throngs of supporters in one of his weekly organized parades. Moyei demo. Friday, he delivers a sermon to a packed audience at a local mosque. <laughs> This week he preaches against the central government, emphasizing instead his own record of reconstruction. Experts say that regional warlords such as Ismail Khan are among the most important issues for President Hamid Karzai as he moves to consolidate his control over the entire territory of Afghanistan. Only time will tell how much power Khan will choose to cede to the central government.